Everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm four one nine seven five, and today we are taking the Volkswagen Beetle down our rally course. Yes. Yeah, so in the past couple of episodes, we've had something American. In the last episode, we had something Japanese, and so I thought today we'd go with something German. And what an absolute beast it is. The Volkswagen Beetle is renowned for being one of the best Baja running cars, you know, of all time. So I thought, why not take it down our rally course and see how the little Beetle can do. If you this is the first episode you've seen of the series, then we take a stock vehicle like the Beetle here, upgrade it to S1 class and take it down a rally course of my own building. And then we will see how it racks up against previous vehicles. Now, our current fastest rear-wheel drive vehicle, or two-wheel drive vehicle, I should say, is the DeLorean, which is in 12th position. And no car has been able to touch that so far, or no, no two-wheel drive vehicle, I should say. Now, I'm hoping the Beetle today might possibly be able to knock the DeLorean off that title. It is a rear-engined, rear-wheel drive configuration, so we've got plenty of weight over the rear wheels. So I'm curious to see how the Beetle is going to do with its rally pedigree, but first we need to go ahead and upgrade the thing into S1 class. Now I know for a fact it's not going to be able to reach S1 class with its stock engine. Normally, as per the rules of the series, we'll keep the stock engine and um, aspiration, that means no superchargers or turbos unless the PI calls for it. And in this case, the PI does call for it. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade this thing with some kind of boxer engine. So we've got a 2 litre flat 4 turbo. We've got a 2.5 litre flat 4 turbo. Then we've got the 2 litre flat 4 turbo rally engine. And finally, we've got the 4-litre flat 6 out of some kind of Porsche. I'm not sure which one. Um, I have previously upgraded this thing as a street vehicle, and I've been running the 2.5 Subaru engine, and that has served me very well. So we'll go with that. Now, as per the rules of the series, all the vehicles will keep their stock drivetrain. That means all-wheel drive vehicles will remain all-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive vehicles will remain two-wheel drive. This thing currently is rear-wheel drive. There is an option for all-wheel drive, but we're not going to use that today. Now, we do have a few visual upgrades. These don't really improve the car in any way. Sometimes they can remove a bit of weight or they can decrease, decrease drag. Um, in this case, I don't really think they're going to do too much. They remove a little bit of weight, but honestly, it's nothing that important so i'm just going to leave the car completely standard but i'll just run through the options in case you're interested in how to upgrade it but i want to make this thing look as much like herbie the beetle as possible we're going to add this herbie the beetle livery on this thing i already had it as a herbie the beetle design as a road car you can see that i've already upgraded it in the past with road tires but since we're going off-road, we're going to need these, the off-road tyre compound. And you may be asking, why aren't you going with the off-road race tyre compound? Well, all the previous vehicles have used the off-road tyre compound, uh, previously known as the rally tyre compound if you played Horizon 4. And this is because part of the circuit is actually tarmac. So we want as much grip on the tarmac as we would get on the dirt. And obviously, if we go for the full off-road race tyre compound, then the grip on the tarmac would be reduced. So, as we're building this as a multi-surface vehicle, we'll go for the off-road tyre compound. We will fit as large a tyres as we can. We've only got 225s in the front and 245s in the rear, but they're still quite big for a vehicle like this. We're going to go ahead and just leave the stock wheels. That's what we've been doing on most vehicles, so we'll just go ahead and do that. 
We'll upgrade the clutch, we'll put in a race transmission and a carbon fiber drive shaft. And we want to fit the rally diff because we're taking this thing off road. That will allow me to tune the differential um, and hopefully help us get a couple more tenths of a second out. Um, we'll upgrade the brakes so we can slow the vehicle down. You can see I previously upgraded this thing to a road vehicle, but we want to lift it this time. Actually, it looks quite hilarious lifted up like that. I should point out as well that this is not the Baja bug. Uh, so there are a few different versions of the Beetle in Horizon 5. This is just the standard 1963 Volkswagen Beetle. So there is a proper like Baja off-road version of the Beetle. But I didn't want to use that in this episode. I just wanted to use the standard Beetle and try and make it into a Baja vehicle myself. So we're nearly up to S1 class. Hopefully with all the engine upgrades we should get there. Uh, let's see what we can do. Yep, yeah, there we go. We're going to go over into S1 class. And there it is. Upgrade as much as we possibly can. I started off this series saying that we had to upgrade the vehicles to the top of S1 class. But some of the vehicles couldn't quite reach the top. So as long as we are into S1 class, that is okay. Now, as I mentioned in the last episode, we have had an update in Horizon 5 that allows us to use the race turbo with anti-lag, which makes it pop and bang like mad. Um, but when I started this series over a year ago, that update hadn't come out yet. And there was no turbo with anti-lag. So we will not be using the anti-lag turbo. We'll just be using the standard race turbo. Obviously to make it more competitive against the previous cars that have run. So hopefully that makes sense. And there we go. Let's have a little look at the statistics. Um, we've got nearly 600 horsepower. 500 foot-pound of torque. Uh, we're weighing nearly two tons about three quarters uh, sorry nearly three quarters of a ton so it's quite a light vehicle and we've got the 2.8 boxer engine in there with turbo so hopefully this thing is going to be competitive against the delorean which is also a rear engine rear wheel drive configuration that had a lot more horsepower i think we put the viper v10 in that car um, but this thing is probably a bit lighter than the DeLorean. So I'm going to go ahead and paint and tune the vehicle. And I will see you over at the rally course. Okay, here we go. Herbie's first attempt. Let's see what it can do. Bit of wheel spin off the line. Let's see how it handles the tarmac section. A little bit of bobbling around. The suspension is very, very soft. I wanted to tune it more to cope with the bumps. The Subaru we had in the last episode did seem to struggle a little bit with the bumps. Now, because it is rear wheel drive, I'm going to keep it quite high geared to try and negate a bit of the wheel spin. I've tuned the car more for acceleration than top speed as I do with most of the vehicles because it is unlikely we're going to hit the vehicle's top speed at any point during the course. And I have to say for a rear wheel drive vehicle it is performing very very well. Obviously nowhere near the pace of the all wheel drive vehicles. I'm trying to keep the vehicle as straight as possible. I'm trying not to go near the throttle too much can't really go wide open throttle in this car because it does want to just pull left or right doesn't really like to go in a straight line but it does soak the bumps up fairly well it's not too uncontrolled through there let's see how we do in the hairpin we will go down to third for the hairpin and we'll just use the throttle generously See if we get a bit of air time. We get a little bit of air time, but nothing to shout out about. Now we're a little bit on the grass, a little bit wide through that section, but not too bad. It is very, very uncontrollable up the hill here. I'm trying to get the power down as much as possible to give us a bit of speed. Pressing the hill at 95 miles an hour, that is a lot slower than some of the vehicles we've seen. The car is just wandering about all over the road. I'm having to counter steer it quite a lot. It is uh, fairly uncontrollable. 
I can't really go anywhere near the throttle, otherwise the car just spins its tyres. Even with all the weight over the rear axle, it does seem to spin up quite nicely. I mean, we are running nearly 600 horsepower in this thing, which the Beetle was definitely not built for. Anyway, coming down the hill, we're already at one at 220. I'm pretty much just coasting around the circuit, and we cross the line with a 228.365, which will put it in um, 18th place, sorry, 19th place, just above the Ford Crown Victoria, which is currently our slowest rear-wheel drive vehicle. So I think any hope of it beating the DeLorean is probably out of the window. Um, I think our next target is probably the AMC Gremlin, which did a 223. So that would be a tall order for the Volkswagen Beetle to shave off almost five seconds. But let's see what we can do in the next run. Hopefully we can improve a little bit. Okay, attempt number three in the Beetle. Let's see how we do. It gets off the line fairly well for a rear wheel drive vehicle. A little bit of spinning. We just got to negate that with a bit of half throttle action. It seems to almost jump over the water splash there, which the Subaru was also doing in the last episode, which is obviously a good thing because that means we're not getting slowed down by the water. Now we're a lot better through that section there. I've learned that we need to just sort of coast this vehicle. We don't need to go really anywhere near wide open throttle. We just sort of get it coasting and then feed the power in gradually. That is the way to drive this vehicle. A little bit wide through there. We almost missed that checkpoint, which we did miss in the Subaru in the last episode. Now we've got a little bit of oversteer through that corner, which most vehicles do. It's a lot more controlled through this uh, section here. It is, again, wandering all about on the bumps down the straight there. It's a little bit uncontrolled. We will knock it down to third, probably a little bit late on the brakes there. And we'll just gradually feed the power in. We'll try and work with the wheel spin. We don't want to fight against it too much. This section up here, we will knock it down to fourth. Now, I was giving it beans up the hill here in the last run. So this time, I'm just going to feed the power in gradually and try and counter steer it. it. Is a faster top speed there. Uh, we were almost 10 miles an hour faster than the previous run. This definitely feels like a much smoother run. I'm just sort of keeping the car at about three quarter throttle. Can't really go anywhere near wide open throttle otherwise the car does just seem to wander around a little bit skewy through that section coming up to the last couple of corners it does seem to like fourth fifth gear it's very comfortable in there the last right hander here we're definitely faster than the previous run let's see if we can get a little bit of the power on down here we'll just feed it in nicely and across the line, it is definitely an improvement over our previous run. Almost 8 seconds faster, and we have already beaten the AMC Gremlins time, which uh, was sort of my next target. So I think probably the next target to go for, if we can, is the 037 from a few episodes ago. That's a 218, so it'll be another 2 seconds off the Beatles time if we can but I think that is probably the biggest improvement we have seen from one run to the next of any vehicle that has run so we've got one more attempt let's see what we can do in that one okay final attempt it was a big improvement over our first run uh, we get off the line much much better there that was about half throttle this time now I'm going to try and use a bit more of the throttle Use the gearing to the advantage down this section. The straights is where this car is going to be fast. So we're going to try and use and find the speed in the straights as much as possible. You go anywhere near the throttle and the whole car just vigorously turns left and right. And you have to counter steer it, which uh, 
is a little bit scary to be honest because you can never predict which way it's going to go we'll just coast it nicely through this section here third gear is okay we'll just feed the power in nicely found that is the way to drive the beetle is just don't go from no throttle to wide open you just got to feed it in gradually let the car grip and once it has gripped you can then go ahead and feed in the full throttle like we have down there that was much better down that section we weren't wandering around as much i didn't have to counter steer nearly at all which was great through the hairpin will coast nicely and then once again we'll feed the power in let the car grip up and then you can go wide open that is the way to drive the beetle and now that I've got used to that, it isn't actually too difficult to drive this car smoothly. Now, up the hill, we were cresting uh, at about 105 miles an hour in the previous run. Let's see if we can get any more speed. About the same as the last run, to be honest. We'll coast through that corner there. We can probably get away with fifth up here, just for a little bit more kick in the backside. Now, this corner here, we've got to break. And, oh, there we go. That was missed the checkpoint and into the tree. Unfortunately, so close to the finish line that that is going to void the Beatles run. Unfortunately, Herbie looked very sad sat in the tree there. So, unfortunately, the second run of the Beetle is going to be the one that goes forward onto the leaderboard. But let's go to the leaderboard and have a little look at the lap times. Well, there we go. A little bit unfortunate that we didn't get to finish the third run, but honestly, I don't think the pace of the third run was anywhere near the second run, which is the time that is on our leaderboard. Yes, there it is. 0220.541. That is going to put the Beetle in 16th place, just behind the also rear-wheel drive, rear-engined Ford GT70 and the Lancia 037, another rear-wheel drive, rear-engined vehicle. We did beat the uh, AMC Gremlin by almost three full seconds, which was amazing. So we had a massive improvement from almost tw 2 minutes 28 seconds to 2 minutes 20. That's eight seconds knocked off from the first lap time so like i said that's probably the biggest improvement i've seen in any run of any car we've taken so far uh, sadly we didn't get to finish that third run there but that is the rules of the series if we hit a tree if we roll if we miss a checkpoint that run gets void and it'll be the fastest lap time that we have already run that is why the vehicles get three runs down the track but very very impressive showing from the beetle I honestly did think it was going to beat the DeLorean this week. Sadly, it was not to be. But from a very, very old car, I mean, this thing's from 1963. So um, it's a good 70 years old. This car did put on an impressive showing. So very well done to the Beetle. I enjoyed driving the car. Once I figured out how to drive the car, make the thing grip up, then it was a lot more controllable. I think if this thing had all-wheel drive, it would have been an absolute monster. So that is going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, then it would be awesome if you could smash the like button and subscribe if you're new for more series just like this one. That's going to do it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.